Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shag here, and welcome back to a one-day space engineer build. Now, last time we built the Defiant, and this time, the USS Voyager, Intrepid class. If you don't know, this comes from the series of the same name, Voyager. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest designs that I have done for a one-day build, or just a build in general because of how rounded it is. I actually detached a couple pieces you'll see floating off into space, but if you look at Voyager, it is one of the the curviest ships, you could say. I mean, even the Galaxy class, it's mostly flat, whereas this, it's very round, something hard to pull off, and I'm eyeballing this one. So if you guys don't know, I don't, like, overlay an image of the ship that I am building and take measurements and break it down into pixels and into blocks like a lot of people do to build my one day builds because I like to see what my eye catches as like the defining characteristics and then drawing it out. I am incredibly impressed by actually how this one came out because I think I got the shape down. But it's more than just getting the shape down. In this, it was actually getting it working in Space Engineers. So I got the basic shape, then I realized I had mirrored it on um, in four directions, or two major directions. So, you know, up, down, left, and right. So I had to uh, make a copy, fix some issues that I, I messed up on the right-hand side, and then flatten out the bottom, because it right now kind of looks like an egg. And if you look at the bottom of Voyager, it's pretty flat. So I'm working on the, the main deflector area, I guess you'd call that the engine bay area, and then mapping out where the nacelles are gonna go. Now Voyager was unique, and it's the only starship that I can remember where it actually had two warp nacelles that could fold. They could move. And they move like 45 degrees upwards every time it went to warp. The biggest problem that I had with this build wasn't actually the rounded bit. It was getting the nacelles in a way that I liked, how they looked, but also be functional in space engineers. I need to be able to put thrusters in there. Now I've actually gone in, I've cut the thing in half, and I've started designing the bottom section. Now what I'm missing so far is the deflector dish, which, there we go. I've drawn out the deflector dish now, and that, I was like, what am I gonna do with the deflector dish? It needs to glow. I mean, one of the, the defining characteristics of Starfleet vessels is the glowing blue deflector dish, the glowing blue nacelles, and then the back end. Now I'm like strapping engines to the side to kind of get an idea of scale because I need to be able to fit either hydrogen thrusters or ion thrusters, and I hadn't decided what I wanna do. Hydrogen would be great if I wanna make this thing land on planets. That was one of the things that Voyager was fairly unique for. They actually did it in the series a bit later on in the series. They did it a couple of times. They did a force landing. I know where they crashed. I wanna say that might've been, that was the last episode. And then, you know, spoilers. And um, that's not how their series ended, so don't worry. I didn't give anything away there. Uh, and then they also had some, some actual landings with these ridiculous struts that came out of the engineering section of the ship that looked like they could never hold anything up which is exactly how it looks in the finished product. But there you go, there's the nacelle. I've got the basic shape of the ship. Time to get the deflector dish online, get that blue glow. I experimented with a few things using uh, LCD panels and changing them to a blue color. The problem is when you move away from it, they kind of disappear. Then I used uh, just colored in blocks and then I used lights. Eventually just some good old lights colored, that's the way I do it. But all right, let's go ahead and get into the first test flight of the Intrepid class, USS Voyager. All right, we're back live and ready for the big reveal, the USS Voyager Intrepid class. And here she is. Now, that's not my dry dock. If you guys are wondering, that's actually Twitchin's dry dock. I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can check it out. And it is, it is gorgeous. This is the, oh man. The Infinity Station, he's actually named it on the uh, the antenna there. The Infinity Station. Now, I didn't build this in this station, but look at the size. It is, what, maybe a block? Half a block on one side, half a block on the other. It is the perfect size for my Intrepid class, I have to say. So, well done, Twitchin. You, he's probably one of like the master builders. He is so good at this, and I love his designs. But anyways, it's kind of very, very Starfleet, I think, especially in the coloration that he's used. But let's go ahead and get get the Intrepid on her maiden voyage. So, as you can see, I've done quite a few upgrades. Her ship systems have been installed. It is well past Tuesday, and all the things are installed. We've got our phasers and or energy weapons installed on the top. This is a fantastic mod. I can also link that in the description. We will be testing these weapon systems for the very first time. They are hooked up to the power grid. We've got our maneuvering jets which are our ion thrusters mixed in all over the ship. If I come down here, you'll notice there are a lot of doors. We will be going over the functionality of those doors shortly. 
when we attempt to land the ship. These are actually the bay doors for the thrusters. So there's our maneuvering jets. We'll be using those to get out of the bay. A lot of you guys said during the um, the Defiant build, if I zoom out here, you can actually see the Defiant in the background. Uh, the, during the Defiant build, Shaq, you should get the, the Star Trek phaser mod. Well, I installed it on here, not particularly thrilled. If I remember, the sound effect was a lot better a while back, and maybe with the sound changes, it changed how the sound operates. It's actually really horrific. But I threw on a couple actual Starfleet phasers from the Star Trek weapons pack. Maybe it's a different mod you guys are thinking of, though, and you can let me know in the comments below. Uh, right now, the ship systems are all offline because she's been in dry dock. We'll start her up shortly. More thrusters on the top, more bays on the top. She's been piped. That's actually the armor plating for the bridge, which I am sitting on right now. Let's let's bring her online. Let me get back into first person. I'm in the... Um, uh, there's only supposed to be one control panel in the front of the bridge in the Intrepid class. Uh, that's where... Paris would fly the ship all the time, but let's go ahead and bring the reactors online, bring all systems online. There we go, looking good. We'll talk about those displays in just a second. Let's zoom out. Get started back up so you guys can see her come online. Ah, I love that effect. The, the deflector dish coming up. And our weapons should be activated and moving around. Yes, they are. All engines are on for our... All right, go ahead and take us out. Let's bring on the main braking and forward thrusters. Take control, engage engines. Now, yes, I'm using hydrogen engines for this. One of the things that Voyager, let's go ahead and get away from that connector at the top. The Voyagers was known, Voyager or the Intrepid class was known for was the fact that she was incredibly maneuverable. Her first mission was to go to the Badlands, which is an area of space near Bajor that has sp angry space tornadoes, is what we'll go with. It was a horrible place. They used to hide from the Cardassians there. And so to find these Maquis renegades, her first mission was to go into the Badlands, and the only ship that could get it done was probably the Defiant, some shuttlecrafts, or this new class of ship with a better sensor package. And there you go. Oh, man, she's gorgeous. I love how the nacelles came out. We'll talk about the functionality of those. Actually, right now, let me go ahead, turn... Oh, we'll just let her... We'll let her drift while we talk about it. So, the nacelles, you're probably noticing, we've got large hydrogen thrusters in the fore and aft sections. That means that she can stop pretty quickly if she needs to. Hydrogen thrust is the most powerful thrusters they have in the game right now that aren't modded. Let's go ahead and kick that forward thrust back on so we keep drifting forward. The nacelles themselves are themselves have the blue glow because I put four spotlights in there. They're covered in glass and then in the inside I had originally painted some um, some blocks blue and it gave it a great glow but that wasn't really great for functionality and I was thinking okay Voyager was known for her long distance flight through the Delta Quadrant being 70 years away from Federation space. How can I make this thing more survivable uh, for like a long trip? Well, I threw on a bunch of solar panels, and they do work through the glass. It's not a whole lot of power, but it's enough, especially if you're trying to run, say, oxygen generation systems to make hydrogen for fuel. And if we look inside, actually, you know what we'll do? We'll actually just carve out a section of the, the nacelle here. Let's turn off mirror mode. If we do this, she's got multiple large tanks for hydrogen storage because our main propulsion system, well, it's hydrogen. We're gonna need a ton of hydrogen storage. That's the same on both nacelles. She's got, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. So she's got 10 large hydrogen tanks. That is enough for her to land on a planet surface and take off again. And yes, she is atmosphere capable. She can land on a planet surface if you didn't notice the landing gear on the bottom, which look just as ridiculous as the ones from the actual show, except for the ones from the show are probably about 10% the size of those ones. So you can imagine how crazy they look, especially for how top heavy she is, or front heavy. So we talked about the nacelles, her engines. She does have a jump drive in there, but that, let's take a little tour of the inside. Now remember, this is a one day build. So I didn't have like two weeks to, to decorate and organize the interior. If I was going to go back through this, I would completely redo the interior now that I, I know what it takes to get her to land on a planet, take off and have hydrogen as her primary fuel source, because I want this to work in Space Engineers. But welcome to the bridge. Uh, one thing that we're missing is those displays should be working. So let's go to our 
timer block. Also want to install more functionality of this and start the timer block. And that will activate our computer system in the front there. Timer block. There she goes. I hit trigger now. They're all active. Now what's great about this is this is the diagnostic script. Oof, I hate that yellow. You get to, that shouldn't come on either this bright or it shouldn't come on when you're this far away. But anyways, the diagnostic script is a fantastic strip, script that you can download. It's not actually a mod. You can put this in any vanilla build or on any server as long as they allow scripting. And it, what it does is it scans all the blocks on your ship when you first activate it. And, and it makes these images that you're seeing, these cross-referencing cross images. And as damage takes place on the ship, it will actually show up in there. And we'll test this later. I'll actually like blow off one of the nacelles and you'll see that it'll light up red which is pretty cool, or yellow if it's taken damage. At a glance, you can see what ship systems have taken hits. But let's go ahead and go for the tour. Welcome to the bridge. Best I could do in a one-day build uh, to, to kind of replicate what was going on with the bridge of, uh, of Voyager. It was a rounded bridge like most of them are. It's only supposed to have one control panel in the front, but I decided to have two. Maybe the weapons terminal up there. Or right, what would that be? That would be Tuvok Station there, which would be uh, tactical. And then you've got uh, Harry Kim station of never being promoted. So let's go ahead and jump down to the next deck. Now, I I don't want to say I cheated a little bit, but this interior here is a lot of engines. Like this is the death door, I call it, if you come out here. You can put these in, I, and I have thruster damage turned on. And if it's four blocks away, it shouldn't do damage, I believe. And the one thing that is saving this build, if I'm wrong about that, and like I said, I would probably redo the entire interior, is the fact that we've got a giant shield generator on board. That's the other mod that we're using. So we're using a weapon mod and a shield mod that kind of make this work. Honestly, you don't really need those. It just gives you a little bit more atmosphere control. So let's go ahead and head down to engineering. This is the area that I, I really do like. We're using Jeffrey's tubes to get around. Again, I wish I'd rework these. I still want to. But it's a one-day build, gotta hold to that. Welcome to the reactor room, or the warp core. In this case, that's actually the large shield generator. Doesn't that look great for a warp core? But that's the large shield generator, takes a ton of power. Now, originally, I had hooked up the shield upgrade modules on the sides, but man, did that increase the power draw that this thing has, to the point where our actual reactors, which are lining the right, left-hand side, and a couple up top, I think she's got, like, uh, what does she have, 12 small reactors, something like that, just so we didn't have to have those big round reactors. There is a Jeffrey's tube deck below us that we can go down, so there's about three, maybe four decks if you counted them all out. Uh, that's like a, in a, a maintenance bay area, that's where we have all of our piping and our oxygen and hydrogen generation. There's a bunch of um, cargo stuff in there and all kinds of shenanigans. So if we head over to the shuttle bay, which is right back here, your simple shuttle bay. Now, I had done a quick build. I had made a quick build of a, a Intrepid class shuttle. They have one of these really tiny compact shuttles. Not to the point of the Defiant, but fairly small. I had one in here, though I lost that save. I, had, I actually just lost the build. I had moved away from it and didn't mark down the location and it was gone forever. But you guys know what a shuttle bay does. This is it. We can open the bay doors there and I'll even zoom out the back. Ooh, where, where have we drifted to so far? I forgot we're still moving. And there's the shuttle bay that I'm sitting outside of. Everything's piped up. Those pipes run are, see, I wanna bury those in. Those can be reworked too. But those are running into the section where we've got a, our hydrogen generation. Refilling the tanks is necessary. And the tanks give us quite a bit of fuel. I mean, once you go with, get, get going max speed, you're good to go. So you're not gonna be burning fuel that way. The thing that's gonna burn a lot of fuel is trying to land on a planet's surface, which is what we're gonna do, actually first, before we do that, we need to do a weapons test. We definitely need to do a weapons test and see how maneuverable she is. So let's go ahead. We'll go about three kilometers out. Let's pick a ship to give us... Oh, do, 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 do. There was a pirate about earlier and I had planned on blowing that up, but it looks like he has despawned, sadly, or moved on. So, well, you know what? We'll use the Stellaris Corvette. We've already got one out here. She's old, rickety transport barge. The Federation has decided, you know what? Let's just use it as a training practice area. Go ahead and blow up the ship, captains. Let's do it. So, we'll take command of this. 
we'll grab everything and we'll make it space pirate faction the weapons should now be online you know we can even give her a weapon or two which i probably should have done before i made it all angry face let's give her some basic uh let's give it some gatling turrets sure why not we'll stick it on top of the gun <laughs> one gatling turret here or one gatling turret in the back that is fugly but it should be fine should have power and since we're in creative mode it shouldn't need ammunition and we've got to put down some type of control device so we can switch those turrets over to the pirate faction that we've just created gatling turrets space pirates yes all right now they're angry and they're ready to kill let's switch back over to the intrepid class and take and give it a go does she have yes she does pirate antenna the USS Voyager. And we can teleport ourselves right back into the bridge. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all the ship systems are good to go. Let's jump on in here. Section two. We don't have any weapon controls on this. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is switch over to turrets and make sure they're just active and ready to fire. They will fire at 600 meters, that is fine. And large ships target, yes. Looks good to me. Primary weapons are ready to go. Let's grab those phaser banks as well. We don't have any torpedo launchers on this ship, sadly. I did not equip any, like, rocket launchers and whatnot. But we had those all over the Defiant, so I think it's a good mix. All right, let's get in there. I'm going to start getting our speed up. Max speed. Doesn't take long at all. Let's, let's just drift it. All right, 58 meters a second. We don't want to go too fast because we'll blast right past it. Weapons should be online, switching to phasers. And we'll just fall in behind her and hopefully the energy weapons in the front, what we're using is phasers, open fire automatically at 600 meters. Let's switch to a press spectator mode. All right, we should be closing in on 600 meters any second now. Its turrets have opened up. Our shields are holding. The shield generator, I didn't check to see if it was on. Our energy weapons are not opening up on him. Yes, they are. There they go. Phasers are firing. I love, love the energy weapons. They are so cool. But the shield effect, he finally added that shield effect that he's talked about for so long. I don't know why I've stopped firing. Let's go ahead and turn our turrets, laser turrets. Let's increase range to 800 meters and take direct control of the ship. And let's go for a phaser run. Now, I only fired a couple of times. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe it's a lack of power? Now we're way out of range. This is why I should have slowed down as we got into range, but kicking on the engines, full burn. Those hydrogen thrusters are great. You know, I could put in a few more like maneuvering jets. I think if I was gonna continue to use this ship, if I really wanted to make this my ship of choice, I would. I would put more more ion engines, like, just mixed in there somewhere. Though then I'd have to do a weight and balance again to make sure that I could land. All right, let's turn on the inertial dampeners to make sure that we stop. Because, yeah, we don't have a lot of stopping power when it comes to sideways thrust. I was 800 meters is what I set it to. This time we're coming in from a below, and let's switch to phaser emitters. See, I'm only going to fire this a couple of times because the sound effect is terrible. Maybe if I uh, switch over to the ship I'm firing at. Now I'm like totally off. <laughs> All right, let's check the energy weapons. We are at 700, but they're not firing. Do they not consider it an enemy vessel? Let's see if we start taking fire again or if we destroy them. The enemy's returning fire again. And the shields are holding, so their ship... There we go. Now we're returning fire. All right, so there's the shields. They're holding. Our weapons are beginning to fire. Now they fire really slowly for some reason on their own. I'm going to go ahead and take manual control of one of them. Cut off the wing. Now these would overheat if we weren't in... Oh, this is what spectator mode looks like with the turret installed. 
I'm a little sad that it's not just auto firing. For some reason it's not though. Maybe I installed the no AI version for servers or something. I didn't think so. But there you go. Weapon test is semi-successful. Not quite sure why it's not auto firing on its own. I uh, gotta say though, the actual phasers, though they look the part, sound horrific. All right, guys, well, weapon test, fairly successful. Now it's time to try to land on a planet. So I'm gonna load up a map that I've already set up with me falling down through the atmosphere. Uh, it should be the most updated version of the ship, and we will get right to this. All right, sounded like it loaded in. Oh, sweet babies, yes it did. All right, well, we find ourselves quickly hitting the deck. We're falling like a rock. So I've hit seven to open up all the ports, waiting for them to finish opening. What's our altitude? 1,600 feet on our altitude, kicking on all of our braking thrusters, and that's what all those ports do. They kick on our engines. Shit. Okay, turn on forward thrust as well, because, yep, that's a mountain underneath us. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. Why did I save it at such a low altitude? And we're still falling, and we're still at max speed, but we've only got 200 meters till I hit the ground. Do I still have the shields on? I don't know. I had saved this at 8,000 meters or so, but for some reason, loading in took a little bit longer than I expected, and okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Whoa. Well, there you go, guys. She can land on a planet. It was supposed to be me coming in from like a really, really low orbit and falling and turning everything on, but instead it was me barely stopping within, what, 2,000 meters? Oh God, I'm still going down too fast. Engines, 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 engines. I mean, the whole point of this design, and let me, let me put her down so I can explain it. The idea for how she lands is so you don't use up too much hydrogen coming down in case you want to, you know, take back off, uh, is you, you let her fall. You let her fall up until about 5,000 meters. Then you turn on your, let me get it on the ground. She's such a beast. It's such a weird thing to land to because the, the like look at the nacelles. They're gonna hit something. So you gotta always have the, the high point where the landing gear are. Ah, ship like this. You could tell they never designed it to land, and in this show they were like, you know what, let's just make it so it can land. That could be fun. We're down. Oh, shut her down. Okay. Yeah, so the idea for landing this thing, just, good great, how ridiculous this thing looks, was that you, you get her into orbit, you just drop like a rock, you know, max speed, you're falling, gravity's got you completely in its hold, and then once you hit about 5,000 meters or so, the atmospheric thrusters start to really work their magic. They're finally getting enough power to be useful. So you kick those suckers on, and as you get lower and lower, you get about 2,000 meters or so. I'm pretty sure this damage was already there from an earlier attempt, a failed one, and <laughs> I didn't copy it fast enough. But then once you get about 2,000 meters or so, which now you're hauling ass toward the ground, you're gonna have to kick on your hydrogen thrusters. Yeah, this is an older build because I've still got this section open. I loaded up the wrong map. That's why I almost hit the ground. You kick on your hydrogen thrusters, which are right here, and in within 2,000 meters, you should be able to land okay. Of course, if you do it while over, say, a mountainside, which takes up about 5,000 meters of your area that you're going to land in, you might be having issues. So pick your landing zone carefully uh, and well, be really, really careful about where you're coming down at and when you kick on those thrusters because these... Doesn't matter whether or not you're near ground or not, they really don't do their work until you hit about 5,000 meters, is what it seems. That's when you start feeling the thrust, and then I think around 2,000, they start doing 100% the thrust they're capable of. So, there she is though. She's totally capable of landing on a planet safely, and I will prove it, she is capable of taking off from a planet. So, let's kick on those atmospheric thrusters, let's kick on the landing thrusters, let's turn on our rear thrust. And detach. Oh shit. Oh shit. We didn't turn on the main thrusters. It's fine. Everything's fine here. This is why I shouldn't be allowed to pilot. Oh, it's fine. We're good. We're good. <laughs> oh, I think we damaged some of the thrusters. Come on. Oh, the, the, oh, the atmospheric thrusters aren't on. That's why she's barely getting off the ground. There she goes. 
Hand away! In to space. Kind of straight up because most of her thrust is on the bottom and not on the back. So if you want her to go forward and look right, you've got to kind of angle the nose down and get some speed. Like this. There she goes. Into space. Now I tested this in survival and I was able to land on the planet surface, take back off from the planet and still have about, um, oh, I don't know, it might be like 50% hydrogen fuel left. Oh, I said I was going to show you guys what, how the, uh, the damage thing works. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to trigger, not trigger, timer. Timer block, trigger now. I'm not actually paying attention. Oh God, are you guys gonna see some damage? Hopefully the script has turned itself on. We do have some minor damage. Minor, oh crap, hope the shields are on. Go, shields are on. Shields are holding. How are the shields holding? There's no way. This is what that large shields generator will do for you. Notice the shield just changed color. That means it's about to fail. I think that is the structural integrity field in this instance. Oh, there's no way I'm gonna get this rolled back over. Are you kidding me? The shield didn't fail. It didn't fail. <laughs> it's about to though. There's the red. Switch to a uh, third person perspective. Oh, it's not liking that at all. The damage is real. What would happen if I turn the shield off right now? Now this is a shield that has had a lot of time to recharge. Shield off, even though it was just about to fail anyways. And now we're starting to take damage. Now this reminds me of an episode of Voyager. Oh, oh, half the ship just broke and died. Fine. Everything's fine. That'll buff right out. Let's get back inside. Uh, and yeah, there you go. There's the damage that we've uh, we've sustained. If I go ahead and get out of the seat, take a walk around, you can see. Well, you can see the hole in the side of the ship, and you can see. If I switch this over, let's go ahead. Go to. I am going to do a LCD terminal. Here we go. Of a mod spotlight on this mod, diagnostic, underscore, um, maybe two. What is that noise? It sounds like something's walking around out there. I am not in a multiplayer server. Yeah, there may be a couple pieces broken. <laughs> Let's go outside. Oh, my poor ship. All right, guys, well, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what kind of one day build would you like to see next? I do enjoy building these on those nights where I'm just relaxing and they always come out interestingly. Uh, I seem to have a habit of crashing them though. Look at all the gyros, just so you can turn it because she's so heavy.